Another report points out that the Jews were exiled to Tartary. They were found in large numbers in the about his dominions. Says that beyond this river, Amu, there are the ten tribes of Israel who, though they claim to be under their own king, are in reality his subjects and vassals. Dr. Moore's researches show that the Tartar tribes named Chosan are of Jewish origin and that among them are to be found traces of the ancient Jewish faith. For example, they observe the uh, custom of circumcision. The Afghans have a tradition that they are the ten lost tribes of Israel. After the sack of Jerusalem, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, took them prisoner and settled them in the Gaur country near Bamiyar. Before the coming of Khalid bin Walid, they had consistently maintained the Jewish faith. In appearance, the Afghans resemble the Jews in all respects. Like them, the younger brother marries the widow of the elder brother. A French traveler, L.P. Ferrier by name, who passed through Herat, states that in this territory there are many Israelites who have complete liberty in the observance of the customs of their faith. The rabbi Bin Yamin of Toledo, Spain, in the 12th century A.D., ventured out in search of the lost tribes. He states that these Jews are settled in China, Iran, and Tibet. Josephus, who wrote the history of ancient Jews in 93 A.D., in his 11th book, in the course of his account of the Jews who escaped from bondage with the prophet Ezra, states that the ten tribes were settled beyond the Euphrates even at that time, and that their numbers could not be counted. By beyond the Euphrates are meant Persia and the eastern territories. St. Jerome, who lived in the 5th century A.D., writing about the prophet Hosea, Concerning this subject states in the margin that from that day the ten tribes of the Israelites have been under King Parthia, that is, Paras, and have not been released from bondage. In the first volume of the same book it is stated that Count Juan Steram writes on page 233 and 4 of his book that the Afghans admit that Nebuchadnezzar, after the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem, exiled them to the territory of Bamiyan, this lies adjacent to Ghaur in Afghanistan. In the book, A Narrative of a Visit to Ghazni, Kabul, and Afghanistan, by G. T. Vigne, F. G. S., 1840, on page 166, it is stated that one Mullah Khudadad read out from a book called Majma'ul Ansab that the eldest son of Jacob was Yahuda, whose son was Uzrak. Uzrak's son was Aknur, Aknur's son was Ma'alib, Ma'alib's Kafarlai, Farlai's Kais, Kais's Talut, Talut's Armea, and Armea's son was Afghan, whose descendants are the Afghan people and after whom the latter are named. Afghan was the contemporary of Nebuchadnezzar. He was called a descendant of Israel and had 40 sons. In the 34th degree, after 2,000 years, was born Kais, who lived in the time of Muhammad, the holy prophet, on whom be peace and blessings of God. His descendants multiplied unto sixty-four generations. Afghan's eldest son, called Salm, migrated from his home in Syria and settled in Ghaur, Mashkoh, near Herat. His descendants spread into Afghanistan. In the Encyclopedia of Geography by James Brife, FGS, London, 1856, on page 11, it is stated that the Afghans trace their genealogy to Saul, the Israelite king, and call themselves the descendants of Israel. Alexander Burns says that the Afghans state that they are of Jewish origin, that the king Babul captured them and settled them in the territory of Gaur, which is to the northwest of Kabul, that up to 622 A.D. they continued in their own Jewish faith, but that Khalid bin Abdullah, mistaken for Walid, married the daughter of a chief of this tribe and made them accept Islam in that year. In the book History of Afghanistan by Colonel G.B. Mallison, published in London, 1878, page 39, it is stated that Abdullah Khan of Herat, the French traveler Friar John, and Sir William Jones, who was a great Orientalist, agree that the Afghan people are descended from the Beni Israel. They are the descendants of the ten lost tribes. The book History of the Afghans by L. P. Ferrier, translated by Captain W. M. Jassa, 
and J A S S E, and published in London, 1858, records at page one that the majority of Oriental historians are of the opinion that the Afghan people are descendants of the ten tribes of Israel, and that the Afghans' own opinion is the same. The same historian says at page four of this book that Afghans possess evidence that at Peshawar, during his invasion of India, Nadir Shah was presented by the chiefs of the Yusuf Zai tribe with a Bible written in Hebrew, as well as several other articles preserved by their families for the performance of religious ceremonies of their old faith. There were also Jews in Nadir Shah's camp. On seeing the articles, they readily recognized them. Again, the same historian states at page 4 of his book that in his opinion Abdullah Khan of Herat's view is reliable. Briefly stated, this view is Malik Talut Saul had two sons, Afghan and Jalut. Afghan was the patriarch of these people. After the rule of David and Solomon, there was mutual fighting between the Israel tribes, as a result of which each tribe became separated from the rest, and this state of affairs continued up to the time of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar launched an invasion and killed 70,000 Jews. He sacked the city, taking the remaining Jews with him to Babel as prisoners. After this catastrophe, these children of Afghan fled in fear from Judea to Arabia and lived there for a long time. But as water and land were scarce and man and beast were both hard-pressed, they decided to migrate to India. A party of uh, Abdalis remained in Arabia, and during the Khilafat of Hasrat Abu Bakr, one of their chiefs established a link by marriage between them and Khalid bin Walid. When Iran fell to Arabia, these people migrated from Arabia and settled themselves in the Iranian provinces of Faras and Kirman. They stayed there till the invasion of Genghis Khan. The Abdalis were helpless against the atrocities of Genghis Khan. They came to India, passing through Makran, Sindh, and Multan, but they had no peace here. Ultimately, they went to Koch Sulaiman and settled there. The other members of the Abdalis tribe also joined them there. They consisted of 24 tribes, the descendants of Afghan, who had three sons, namely Saraband, or Saraban, Arkash, or Gargasht, Karlan, Batan, alternative names. Each of them had eight sons, who multiplied into 24 tribes, each tribe being named after the name of each son. Their names, with the names of their tribes, are given below. We have columns here, sons of Saraband, name of tribe, Gagasht, Arkash's sons, name of tribe, and sons of Karlan, name of tribe. First of all, sons of Saraband, Abdal, name of tribe, Abdali, Babur, name of tribe, Baburi, Vazir, Vaziri, Lohan, Lohani, Barch, Barchi, Chugiyan, Chugiyani, Sharan, Sharani. Now the son uh, Gargasht, who is Arkash's son, and name of tribe. Hilj, and the name of tribe, Hilji. We have Kakar, Kakari, Jamurin, Jamurini, Saturiyan, Saturiyani, Peen, Peeni, Kas, Kazi, Takan, Takani, Nasar, Nasri. Now, sons of Karlan and name of tribe. Khatak, Khataki. Afrid, Afbi. Banganesh, Banganeshi. Landipur, Landipuri. The book Machzan i Afghani by Khawaja Nimatullah of Herat, written 1018 Hijra in the time of King Jahangir, Translation published by Professor Bernard Doran of Kharki University, London, 1836, contains in the chapters mentioned below the following statements. In chapter 1, there is the history of Jacob, Israel, with whom starts the genealogy of this people, the Afghans. In chapter 11, there is the history of King Talut, that is, the genealogy of the Afghans is traced to Talut. On pages 22 and 23, it is 